and welcome to Bee Mom. We are going to read a story from something called Aesop's Fables. It's a very, very old collection of stories and the idea was they told a story to try to teach something because that helps people learn oftentimes. And so each story has a little saying at the end that is like the moral of the story. And that way you can learn a little something and see a cute example of it. Now, this book that I have has just three of them and it does have the name Paul Galdon, but he is not the one who wrote these. He translated them and put them down. Mr. Aesop was a uh, Greek and he lived long, long time ago. His stories were so helpful for people that we still read them today. This book only has three. I think I already said that. But you can go to the library and get books with all of them in them. And they're very, very fascinating. They're very fun. And most of them revolve around animals and different antics and things that they do. Antics are like funny things they try to do. So here you go. This is for you uh, younger kids, elementary kids, and your, your moms, they can talk. If they watch this with you, they can talk to you about it and the things that we One we're going to read today is called The Fox and the Grapes. One late summer day, the fox was strolling through an orchard. Soon he came to a bunch of ripe grapes hanging from a lofty branch. Just the thing to quench my thirst, he thought. He crouched down, then took a run and a jump, but he didn't go high enough. See, he can't quite make it. He turned around with a one, two, three, and jumped again, but he still didn't go high enough. Again and again, the fox tried to reach the tempting grapes until at last he gave up and walked away with his nose in the air and said, I'm sure those grapes are sour. And the moral of the story is, it's easy to scorn what you cannot get which basically means sometimes we don't always tell ourselves the truth and we say something bad about something because we can't have what we want. And that's not always the best way to do. The next one is called The Fox and the Stork. The fox and the stork were friends and one day he invited her to dinner. For a joke, the fox served soup in very shallow dishes, and he lapped up the soup easily, but the stork could not even get a mouthful. I'm so sorry you do not like my soup, said the fox slyly. Don't worry about it, said the stork. Why don't you come and dine with me in the marsh tomorrow? I should like that, said the fox. Mmm. Not a very good friend. <clears throat> he arrived at the appointed hour only to find two tall, narrow vases in the grass. And the stork easily sipped the soup at the bottom of her vase, but the fox could only smell it and lick the side of the vase. <clears throat> I'm so sorry you do not like my soup, said the stork. The fox said nothing and left as hungry as when he came. 
Tricksters cannot complain when they are turned in their tricks. <clears throat> but this, this is a cute story. And the moral is be kind to your friends. So we learn. And the last story is called The Fox and the Crow. So lots of foxes in this one. A fox once saw a crow fly by with a piece of cheese in her beak. I want that cheese, thought the fox. He sat down beneath the tree and called, Good day, Mistress Crow. How well you're looking. How bright your eye. How glossy your feathers. And the crow was pleased, and she loved to be flattered. <laughs> See, she's listening oh, to all these wonderful things he's saying. I'm sure your voice is even more beautiful than your feathers, cried the fox. Won't you sing for me, O oh queen of birds? The crow was so pleased that she could hardly sit still. Uh-oh. <clears throat> she lifted her head high, closed her eyes, and opened her beak to sing. And the cheese fell to the ground right in front of the fox. There it goes. Thank you, Mistress Crow, he said to the unhappy bird. In exchange for your cheese, I'll give you a piece of advice. Never trust a flatterer. And then he ate the cheese. Very true. Say thank you and move on in life. And that is the end of the story. Thank you. Tell your mom and dad if they like this to subscribe and like it. If you liked the story, say push the like button, mommy, and like it. There's a bell there if you want to know when I put more stories on and you click the bell, the bell will ring. And then that can tell you, hey, can I listen to a story when I have time? Thank you, boys and girls. It's always nice reading to you.